everyone! On this episode of Coding with Kate, we are going to be talking about spinal fusions, which is in ICD-10 PCS, the procedural coding system, and this root operation or objective of the procedure is fusion. You will only find it in specific body systems in the code book in the upper and lower joints because fusions only happen in the joints in between the bones so that's why you will only find it in those body systems but specifically today we're going to talk about spinal fusions so that happens along the spine because they can be a little tricky as far as the anatomy that is used and the terminology that is used so today we're going to be going in depth on defining spinal fusions, all the different language and terms that are used, how to decide what devices to use, etc. We're going to cover all of that and hopefully we will be more confident with coding spinal fusions. When we are talking about spinal fusions, it covers two separate body systems. So this might be a little bit different than what you were taught in your anatomy courses. Within the spine, you have different vertebral sections. You have your cervical in your neck, your thoracic that's around your chest region, your lumbar, which is more like an abdomen section in between your ribs and your hips. And then you have your sacral, which is around where your, about where your hips are, and then your coccyx, which is at the very end. Now, the thoracic vertebrae and up is considered upper joints. So you will find cervical and thoracic in the upper joints body system of the PCS code book. The lumbar, sacral, and coccyx are in the lower joints body system of the PCS code book. So that is where you will find those sections, how they are defined by body region. Within fusion specifically, we are only talking about the joints, the intervertebral joints, because two vertebrae will be fused together with a device or a bone graft. So we are not talking about the vertebrae itself. We are talking about the joints, the space in between, and that is why it is in the joint body system sections of the code book. Once you go into whichever body system you are coding for and you find your fusion table, you need to figure out exactly which body parts or body part characters you need to use. So there are two things that you need to pinpoint and how to define them. So you need to figure out what level the spinal joint is at. Thoracic, lumbar, cervical, etc. You also need to figure out how many joints are being fused. Are they just doing one joint or are they doing two or more? So one joint or are they covering a whole section of the spine, several joints together? Because in the body part column of your table, it will specify one joint, two to seven joints, etc. You also need to keep in mind that some spinal fusions cross several spinal levels. So it might be cervical thoracic, thoracic lumbar, lumbar sacral, and they do have those within the table. So you don't need to have two different codes for a thoracic lumbar fusion. They will have that in there for you just in case they do cross over. But know that if they are doing two or more thoracic vertebrae fusions and a thoracic lumbar, you'll need two separate codes. One for just the thoracic, because your body part, that's just covering the thoracic. And then you'll have a second code for the thoracic lumbar. Keep that in mind, because the lumbar is a separate body part and there's a separate body part character for thoracic lumbar. So two separate codes if you have multiple in one level and then one that goes into a different level of the spine. 
Then we move on to our device column. There are a few types of devices. You can always go in the device appendix of the PCS codebook if you aren't sure the, of the device that they're using, what PCS will call it, so you can always refer to that. The first one you will see is an interbody fusion device. So this would be some type of metal structure. They usually call it a cage. But if they do say a cage or a spinal cage or a vertebral cage, you can go into the appendix and look for that name and it will tell you which device name to use. So interbody fusion device. We also have autologous tissue substitute because sometimes spinal fusions just use bone grafts or substitute bone tissue instead of an interbody fusion device. Sometimes they don't use a cage or any metal hardware, they just use the bone. So there's autologous tissue substitute, autologous meaning coming from that person, so it is their native tissue, their native bone tissue that was harvested in a separate procedure. Then we have non-autologous tissue substitute. So this is similar to autologous in that it is bone tissue, except it does not come from the patient, it comes from someone else. It is non-autologous, not from the same person, someone else. So these are your options for devices in spinal fusions, and sometimes they use the term allograft for autologous or non-autologous substitute tissue. So keep in mind that allograft might come up. So in our decision tree, we have our first box, the fusion is performed. Then we can move over to this circle that says interbody fusion device used alone or with bone. If you answer yes, that they use an interbody fusion device by itself or in combination with bone, then we would want to code interbody fusion device. If we answered no to that question, and they used bone by itself or with binders or extenders, and we answer yes to that, then we need to define what type of bone was used by itself or with the extenders or binders. If it was autologous bone, meaning from that person, that person's native bone tissue, then we want to code for autologous tissue substitute. If we answered no to that question, because they use a mix of autologous native bone tissue or non-autologous someone else's bone tissue, if they use those two together, then we want to code for autologous tissue substitute. If we still answer no to that question, then that must mean that they use non-autologous tissue, meaning someone else's tissue. So then you would want to code for non-autologous tissue substitute. So that is our decision tree to help because with some of these when there's a mix, PCS prefers that you use a specific device. So make sure you have a decision tree like this with you when you are learning how to code spinal fusions. You can always make notes of this in your code book so you can always have a reminder if you don't code spinal fusions that often and you always want to have this information with you. And then we get into our qualifier column, which talks about the different approaches that they use to get to and apply either the interbody fusion device or the tissue substitutes. So this is not how they got to the body part. This is not in our approach column. They cover this in the qualifier column. So the first one you will see is anterior approach, anterior column. That means there are going in through the anterior, so through the front of the spine, and they are applying whatever device on the anterior column of the spine. And then we have posterior approach, posterior column. They are coming in through the posterior, the back. So they're coming in through the back of the spine, and they are applying the interbody fusion device or tissue substitute on the back side, the posterior side of the spine. 
And then we have posterior approach, anterior column. So they are coming in through the posterior, so posterior side through the back, but they are applying the interbody fusion device or the tissue substitute on the anterior side, so on the front side of the spine. So these are the terms that you will find within the table. And in your courses, you will have more information about them, examples, things like that. You can look into the appendices of the PCS code book for more definitions or examples, especially for the devices. It will usually use the most commonly used term by doctors or even the manufacturer name. So then you can figure out which device name PCS uses for that. So that is a quick summary of spinal fusions, the terms that we use, the differing devices that are used, etc. Coming up in the next couple of weeks, I will make a procedure video on spinal fusion so we can look at an op report that describes a specific type of spinal fusion and then we will actually go into the book and build our code so you can see how this all works within the code book. I will have a link in the description to one of the root operation videos where I cover fusion so you can learn more about that. Comment below if you have any questions or if you too like fusions, coding fusions, and like this video if you enjoyed it and you want more in this type of setup where I'm standing here talking and I have my visual aids behind me. And I will see y'all later. Bye!